Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So here is a question, how to compute elasticity. And I have broken this question into three videos, how to compute elasticity using point elasticity formula, that'll be this one. Then I'll later on I'll do another video for how to compute elasticity using the midpoint formula. And then I'll do how to compute elasticity using our calculus version of the elasticity formula, which actually rests on this point elasticity formula. Okay, so the point elasticity formula is going to be Q2 minus Q1 divided by Q1, whole thing divided by P2 minus P1 divided by P1. Sometimes you think of like new quantity minus old quantity divided by old quantity and new price minus old price divided by old price. So where's this coming from? Where's this P1, P2, old, new? Where's What, what are we doing here? Well, remember our definition of price elasticity of demand is it's the percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in price. And indeed, this formula actually is giving us a percentage change in quantity divided by a percentage change in price. So let's stare at this for a second. The top, uh, the numerator of the numerator, Q2 minus Q1, that's a change, right? So it's like old quantity or new quantity minus old quantity. There's a change there, right? There's a difference, there's a change. And when we divide it by the starting point, that makes it a percentage change. So for example, suppose it's 100 degrees out and it goes up to 102 degrees, that's a 2% change in temperature, right? So 102 minus 100 divided by 100 is a 2% change. All right, so we have a percentage change in quantity in the numerator divided by a percentage change in price in the denominator, and that, sure enough, is exactly, literally, our price elasticity demand formula. All right, so let's see this with an, with an example. So suppose our initial quantity is three, our initial, our subsequent quantity is four, our initial price is seven, our subsequent price is six. So what's going on here? We had a price of seven, price fell to six, and we're interested in the responsiveness of quantity demanded to that change in price. Well, so, all right, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, we can plug in, let's see if I can make this, we can see everything at once. All right, let's plug in Q2, four minus Q1, three divided by three, oh, that's gonna be one divided by three, that's one third. And then P2, six minus P1, seven, divided by seven is gonna be minus one seventh. So I have one third divided by one seventh, minus one seventh, right? Law of demand tells us that price and quantity move in opposite directions. I'm gonna get a negative sign here. Uh, so I'm gonna have one third divided by minus one seventh or one third times minus seven over one or minus seven thirds. Minus seven, divided by three, wait a second, that is, that is a larger numerator, smaller denominator. That tells us that this is gonna be the elastic part of the demand curve. This is gonna be a situation where the percentage change in quantity is larger than the percentage change in, uh, in price. Well, sure enough, you can stare at these numbers and see, yeah, with, with price being substantially larger than quantity, a one unit change is a much larger percentage of quantity than it is a percentage of price. And actually, if you stare at my quantities and prices long enough, you'll realize what was the inverse demand I'm using there? It's price is equal to 10 minus Q, right? And so sure enough, the midpoint should be 5,5. Five. And, uh, and so we're working on the elastic portion of the demand curve. But anyway, so how do we use the point elasticity formula? It's just the change in quantity divided by the starting point divided by the change in price divided by the starting point in price. And what this is doing is this is literally computing the price elasticity of demand at point one, at point one, where Q1 and P1, so at the point at the point three seven on the demand curve, that's where the demand has an elasticity of minus seven over three. If you look at my other video, you realize that, or you'll see an explanation for the fact that along the a linear demand curve, the elasticity changes. So near the top of the demand curve, you'll have more elastic, larger numbers, more responsive demand. In the middle, you have a, a unit elasticity. So price elasticity demand will be equal to one. At the bottom of the demand curve, you'll have something smaller than one. You'll have more inelastic demand. Well, specifically at this point, you're gonna have an elasticity of minus seven over three. Uh, the midpoint formula, by contrast, I'll talk about that in the other video, or the video that I'm making in the f future, will compute an elasticity halfway between these two points. So um, anyway, so this has computed the elasticity of seven over three at the point three seven, right? We could also compute the, the elasticity at the point four six. How do we do that? Well, let's just, let's just uh, switch our identity of like, 
which is firm, which is 0.1, which is 0.2. And rather than talking about a price decrease from seven down to six, we could talk about a price increase from six up to seven. And that would compute the elasticity at the 0.46. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and conclude here.